joined, as Valen uh, correctly said there, by Tobel Amdaka. He's a former South Africa Sevens player. Thank you so much for uh, your time this uh, morning. We're surely expecting uh, South Africa to be dominating at this tournament, especially playing at home. They have been dominating in the, in, in the circuit, in the Sevens circuit for uh, some time now. Um, yeah, thanks for, for having me here, um, Benjamin. I think it will be a, a very interesting uh, Sevens tournament. Um, we, we have uh, never won the Rugby World Cup Sevens, so it's going to be very interesting, um, especially coming back from uh, quite a good season. I think we, we actually ended up second um, in the Sevens series this year, um, but also the confidence um, coming from winning the Commonwealth Games mm. um, should give a boost um, to the players. Are you surprised, though, that we haven't won this particular trophy? I mean, we've, we've won the um, different legs of sevens uh, throughout the world over the years, but this particular trophy has evaded us. Yeah, this uh, trophy has definitely evaded us. Um, you know, I, I think over the years, it, it's been one of those tournaments where we feel um, we keep, you know, missing out right at the final stages. Uh, but also with the Sevens, what used to happen a lot in the past was that um, all of the teams would pick, you know, 15-man players, players from the 15-man mm. side, um, which made it quite interesting and quite difficult for any side to almost predict who's going to win. Yeah. Uh, but now it's become quite a professional era where strictly Sevens players yeah. are being used. Um, and that's going so it to was make sort of like second string 15s players um, yeah. coming through to, to the 7s. When it came to the 7s, yeah. that's exactly what they did. But then they also realized that, you know, in the long run, it actually made no sense because bringing in players from the 15 men who weren't used to the 7s, uh, you know, no system um, or how to play 7s was actually um, a disadvantage for those teams. So now teams have actually decided, you know what, Let's stick with the core of players we have mm. um, instead of losing in a, you know, in the final or semi-final um, with players that haven't been used to playing with us. So that's what's changed in the past, you know, in the recent future. Mm. Speaking of the core of players, the uh, current crop that Neil Powell has at his disposal, I, do you have the confidence in the team? There's been the return of Cecil Africa now for this particular tournament. How are we looking? in terms of the playing personnel? The, the confidence is there. I think we can go all the way. Um, bringing back Cecil Africa will bring a youth of experience, you know, a lot of experience to that side. Um, Cecil Africa has been player of the series for a while. Um, he's, he's, he's actually probably one of the best players, you know, in the South African setup. Um, it was, you know, surprising to see him back because mm. last year, a few years back, he actually announced that he was retiring. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think Neil has, you know, put a lot of confidence in him. Um, but outside Cecil, the team has, has a, is very balanced. You know, there's a lot of experience within the team um, and also a, a bit of youth that's coming into the side. Yeah. So they're a very balanced team. Um, I think three players currently have played in the previous World Cup. Um, Cecil Africa is one of those. Yeah. Captain, you know... And that's Zwarty. exactly why he's been brought in. That's exactly why, you know, because you need players who've played at that level, you yeah. know, who've played a World Cup. So, you know, there's, the players are there. You know, Angelo Davis had, has had a brilliant season, um, top scorer even at the Commonwealth Games. So, you know, we have the players. It's a mm. matter of can we implement, you know, what we've trained, you know, all of those systems put together and, you know, hope that everything is going to work on the pitch. Talking about implementation, you probably are the, the best person to talk to about how Neil Powell thinks and how he is likely to set up. You played in, in, in that era where Neil Powell himself yeah. uh, was a player. What can we expect? What, what sort of approach can we... Um, you know, Neil, Neil is a very strategic um, type of coach. Um, you know, when he was a player, he, is, he was one of those players where he would leave everything on the pitch, you know. He wasn't a star by any means, but um, he made sure that on the pitch he gave, you know, his 100%. And that's what, you know, he makes sure that his players have as well. Um, if you even look at the squad over the past couple of years, um, the Springbok 7 side has been 
um, the best defensive side in, mm. in the series. Mm. Whereas, if you look at the players that they have on the pitch, they probably have the smallest players out of all the teams. Yeah. But defensively, he's been able to bring out that defense, you know, and, and how to put in the courage, yeah. you know, of defending. Um, so, there's a lot of strategy that he's going to implement. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a few things fell off the wagon in, in Los Angeles a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so he's going to try and rectify those as quickly as he can to make sure that, you know, we hit the ground running this weekend. Mm. It's also his farewell. Uh, we, we, he definitely needs to win this particular tournament, yeah. uh, Neil Powell. He's going full-time to the Sharks after this uh, tournament. He's no longer the coach of the Springbok Sevens. H how will success or failure at this tournament affect his legacy, what he leaves with the team, or how the country views where he's left the team since taking over from Paul True. Yeah, you know, it, it's going to be a very emotional tournament um, for Neil Powell. Um, like you've mentioned, it is his last tournament. Mm. Um, he's moving on to the Sharks. Um, but the legacy he's leaving, leaving behind is, is immense. Um, you know, currently... He is um, the most successful coach mm. um, in the Sevens arena um, in, for, for the Blitzbocker. Um, also, you know, he's, got, he, he's won the Commonwealth Games two times. Um, he's won the series three times. Um, it's just the World Cup now that's missing, you know. So everything else is, is, is in place. He just needs um, to close off, you know, this World Cup. But... Um, yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting and very tough for him. Um, you know, yeah. I think the seven series, um, we lost that one right at the edge. Had we come probably fourth, we would have won the series. Yeah. That also could have been, you know, a, a, a brilliant send off for him. But then again, maybe it was a lot of pressure, you yeah. know, on, on the players and on him. Um, and that's why maybe we stumbled. But like I said, um, he's got another opportunity now, you know, to clo close off in a bank. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tobelam Lamtaka, we are out of time. Thank you so much. We will be watching with keen interest this weekend as the uh, Springboks, both uh, uh, the ladies and the guys, take on uh, some of the best teams in the world.